Now, we will discuss some of the questions related to welding. Welding, we will discuss some of the questions of uh, P by Q. In this, we can observe the question which relates to arc welding technique. Arc welding technique where melting efficiency calculations. Ek bar question ko achha padao and try to digest the question first that is very very important. Question ko achha samjhane padega. In arc welding of a butt joint, the welding speed is to be selected such that the highest cooling rate is achieved. Because cooling rate is directly proportional to what? Speed. So, if welding speed is more, cooling rate is more. So, you can find out a more welding speed. So, melting efficiency and heat transfer efficiency are given. The area of the weld cross section is 5 mm square and the unit energy required to melt the metal is 10 joules per mm cube. So, you are saying heat required to melt is 10 joules per mm cube, 10 joules per mm cube per unit volume has given, per unit volume has given that point please remember. If the welding power is a 2 kilowatt, the welding speed in mm per second is, welding speed in mm per second is. So, here if you want to calculate melting efficiency, look at the board all of you, right. Heat is the ratio between heat required to melt by heat supplied, right. So, he has given heat required to melt, heat required to melt he has given so, uh, 10 joules per mm cube. So, we need to substitute heat supply also in joules per mm cube, heat supplied also in case of joules per mm cube, because we have a different equation to calculate heat supplied. Heat supplied will be equal to V into I by area welding speed multiplied by heat transfer efficiency so many joules per mm cube this is per unit volume so many joules per mm cube this is per unit volume if you want to calculate per unit length heat supplied equal to v into i by small v multiplied by heat transfer efficiency this is so many joules per mm so many joules per mm per unit length we can consider this one unit length if heat required to melt is also given in heat length sometimes, then we can consider. Next, if you want to calculate heat supplied so many joules per second, means I can use V into I by, uh, V into I multiplied by heat transfer efficiency so many joules per second, so many joules per second, we can consider this one. Take enough. So, depending on the, please think of heat required to melt, which units they have given, then we need to find out this particular formula. So, heat supplied equation so many joules per mm cube, joules per mm, joules per second like this we are going to consider. Okay? So, from here we need to calculate what is a melting efficiency. So, melting efficiency will be equal to heat required to melt by heat supplied. Heat supplied is V into I by area welding speed multiplied by heat transfer efficiency. This is a formula, very simple formula we are using here. Right. In this, all the parameters are given to you. So, only thing we have to calculate is what? Welding speed, we have to directly calculate from here. So, in this case, if you want to change the question in future, he is asking to calculate welding speed here, we are calculating. In this, with respect to this formula, number of times questions are coming, where sometimes he is asked to find out voltage, sometimes current, sometimes area, sometimes directly he is asking to calculate melting efficiency, like so, here with respect to this particular formula, number of times questions are coming in gate examination. It is a very simple formula and please check the units, in which units you are going to substitute. Whether units balancing is there or not, we have to check it. Whether the units balancing is there or not, we have to check it. That is a very, very important thing you have to consider. So, here melting efficiency, if you want to calculate here, just you can substitute what are the values are given here, just you can substitute here. Melting efficiency as given is 0.5 heat required to melt is 10 joules per mm cube, V into I, voltage and current put together, he has given power 2 into 10 power 3 we are going to consider, 2 into 10 power 3, then area is 5 mm square, welding speed multiplied by 0.7, that is heat transfer efficiency. From here we can calculate welding speed, if you simplify, it is a 14 mm per second, 14 mm per second we can get. So, this is the welding speed we are going to get by using this particular formula. So, in this case option B is correct we can get. Option B is correct with respect to this particular problem, right. If you look at the second question, second question, it is a direct current welding machine with a linear power source characteristics provides open circuit voltage, short circuit current, 
during welding with a machine the measured currents are 500 amperes corresponding to arc length of 5 mm and the measured arc current are 460 amperes corresponding to arc length of 7 mm. The linear voltage arc length characteristics of the welding machine is asking. Linear arc length voltage characteristics of the welding machine is asking. Okay, na? So, that we are going to determine here. So, here if you closely observe what is given here, please observe. He has given, you can think of open circuit voltage is given 80 volts, short circuit current is given 800 amperes, he has given short circuit current of 800 amperes. Right. So, arc length is changing from 5 mm to 7 mm, arc length is changing from 5 mm to 7 mm, uh, corresponding current is changing friends, corresponding current if you consider I T 1 is uh, 500 amperes is current is given, next one is what 460 500, and next one is what 500 ampere corresponding arc length 5 mm. and the measured current are 460 at I T 2 we can consider it is 460 amps we can consider ok and if we need to find out voltage arc length characteristics we are assuming generally V A will be equal to A plus B L A okay, na? so generally this uh, notation we are following so you can use this because he has given capital E and L also after finding we can substitute here simply we have to find the relation means here it is always linear arc length arc voltage characteristics is always linear it is always linear and we need to find out here a and b constant that is all if you find a and b constant it will be uh, correct ok na? so this is the concept but here if you look at closely what is happening here he is saying that vi characteristics is linear vi characteristics power source characteristics is linear it is a linear power source characteristics so, if you assume it is a linear power source characteristics, voltage and current if you consider closely, this point you have to observe. At a given voltage, at a given voltage if you consider let us say V1, V1 I am considering friends here, right. So, this is a V1, corresponding current if I am considering this is what let us say IT1, IT1. So, if you are increasing arc length, arc length is increasing from 5 mm to 7 mm. If arc length is increasing from 5 mm to 7 mm, arc voltage will be also increasing na, V2 is coming here, voltage is increasing. But if you draw this one, current will be getting what decreased, IT2 will be less than IT1. So, I can say here, IT2 will be less than IT1 because voltage current characteristics he has mentioned is linear linear. So, as the voltage is increasing, as the voltage is increasing from V1 to V2, current is decreasing from IT1 to IT2. So, IT2 will be less than IT1, IT1. So, initial current is more when compared to final current. So, that is a concept you have to consider, okay. So, this is the data he has clearly mentioned here. We need to find out A and B here. A and B we need to find out here, okay. So, if you want to calculate here, we know that the concept is like this. So, what is that? I t by I s plus V t by V naught will be equal to 1. We know this equation here. The relationship between transfer voltage, transformer current, open circuit voltage, short circuit current is given by this one. V naught, open circuit voltage, I s, short circuit current, V t, transformer voltage, I t, transformer current or power source voltage, power source current. So, if I rewrite this equation, V t will be equal to V naught minus I t by I s multiplied by V naught. So, this is the point we can consider. So, we will substitute this particular equation here. So, I will consider V t 1 will be equal to V naught A t minus I t 1 that is 500 by I s, I s is how much 800 multiplied by A t. So, if I simplify this one you are getting 40 volts you are getting, it is 40 volts we are getting, 40 or 30, 80 minus 50, 30 volts sorry, we are getting 30 volts here, 30 volts, okay, 80 minus 50 you are getting 30 volts. So, if you want to calculate V T 2 in the similar lines, I am substituting 80 minus 460, 460 by 800 we can consider multiplied by 80. So, if you consider here 80 minus 46, okay. So, this uh, uh, 46 means can I say 34. So, 
So, 4, 50, right, 34 volts we are going to consider here. So, this is the voltage V T 1, V 2. So, transformer voltage, transformer voltage 2 at different arc lengths we are going to find out. Then we know that, we know that stable arc generation condition is, we know that stable arc generation condition. What is the stable arc generation condition? It is V T equal to V A because it is a linear power source characteristics. For a linear power source characteristics, V T will be equal to V A. It is a <coughs> stable arc generation condition. V T will be equal to V A. It is a stable arc generation condition. Okay. So, if you we have two conditions here V T 1, V T 2 and we can substitute V A also to V A 1, V T 2 corresponding arc length 1 and arc length 2. So, if we consider here V T is 30 volts then V is V equal to A plus B L A plus B arc length initial arc length is what 5 mm equation number 1 34 and will be equal to A plus B it is a 7 we can consider equation number 2. If I am solving these two equations here you are getting A equal to 20 B equal to 2 A equal to 2. 20 B equal to 2 we are getting. So, if you substitute here V A equal to 20 plus 2 L A, but he is saying that in place of voltage it is E right. You can say L A is capital L E is saying. So, if you write down this equation here E equal to voltage will be equal to constant A, A is 20 plus constant B 2 and we can say L, it is a L arc length in mm arc length in mm that is a 2 L. So, 20 plus 2 L we are going to get, 20 plus 2 L we are going to get, okay na? <coughs> this is the answer we are going to get. So, in this particular what is the answer we can consider that is option A 20 plus 2 L arc length voltage characteristics is given by linear relationship that is E equal to 20 plus 2 L, 20 plus 2 L. So, that is equal to V A equal to A plus B L A what we are using in general notation. Okay. So, this is regarding question number 2 is considered. Question number 2 is considered. Yeah. If you consider the next question, question number 3, a DC welding power source has a linear voltage current V i characteristics with open circuit voltage of 80 and short circuit current of 300 amperes. For maximum power, for maximum arc power, the current should be set as what should be the, so we know that maximum power condition is given, first point, maximum power condition is given and he has mentioned VI characteristics is what, linear, linear voltage characteristics is given and for maximum arc power condition is given, we can use this shortcut method. We, if VI characteristics is linear, VI characteristics is linear and we can say maximum power condition is given maximum power condition, maximum power if you want to find out, then we will use this shortcut method V t equal to V naught by 2, V t equal to V naught by 2, I t will be equal to I s by 2. This particular shortcut method I can use, this you can remember friends. It is not always, it is not always, if V i characteristics is linear, V i characteristics is linear maximum power condition is given in the problem, then I will use this particular concept. V t equal to V naught by 2, I t equal to I s by 2, I am going to use. Okay, na? Now, by using this particular concept now, I can say I t will be equal to I s by 2, short circuit current by 2. What is the short circuit current he has given? 300 amperes by 2. If we consider here, it is 150, answer is 150. So, the maximum power condition, what is the current we can consider? It is 150, 150 amperes we can consider, 150 amperes we can consider. This is a shortcut method we can use. For example, if this shortcut is not striking in your mind, in the short circuit, you know, this shortcut is not striking in mind. So, we need to go for, uh, right, general uh, please, uh, procedure. So, power equal to Vt into It, I am going to use. Right. So, we need to use V t equal to V naught minus I t by I s multiplied by V naught. I am going to use this formula. So, V t equal to V naught A t minus, right, this is a 
i t we do not know i s is 300 multiplied by 80. So, I am expressing v t in terms of what i t. Now, the power we can consider p equal to v t i t. So, 80 minus i t by 300 into 80 multiplied by i t multiplied by i t because this is v t na. Now, I am differentiating the power differentiating the power with respect to i t and equated to 0 differentiating the power with respect to i t and equated to 0. So, for if you are differentiating this one equated to 0 maxima and minima problem ok na maximum power condition at optimum current at optimum current ok. So, i t will you are getting is around 150 amps. So, you can use this procedure may take one or two steps may required. Otherwise, directly you can use without a calculator also we can solve this one. But this condition you have to remember it is not always maximum power condition chai a apko second condition is V i characteristics always to be linear it should be linear we can say. So, you can use this method right or you can directly go for this one. If you are using the shortcut method it is a uh, very easy and you can save lot of time lot of time in this particular get examination tk right. Yeah, we will discuss the third question that is related to resistance welding, resistance welding here also. So, the resistance spot welding of two 1.5 mm thick uh, metal sheets is performed using welding current of thou, we can say 10,000 amperes for 0.25 seconds. The contact resistance the interface of the metal sheet is 0 0.0001, 100 micro ohm, 100 micro ohm. The volume of the weld nugget formed after welding is 70 mm cube. So, he has given already volume of the weld nugget he has given volume of the weld nugget is 70 mm cube directly given. Tk. So, welding current he has given that is uh, 10,000 amps please uh, read the question carefully and the time he has given is 0.25 seconds. Contact resistance is 0 0.001 right ohm directly ohm he has given so there is no difficulty right. And considering the heat required to melt the unit volume is heat required to melt per unit volume has given how much 12 joules per mm cube 12 joules per mm cube he has given. And thermal efficiency of the welding process is how much how much is a thermal efficiency. So, thermal efficiency or melting efficiency both will be same thermal efficiency or melting efficiency both will be same ok. Now, here we need to calculate heat supplied here heat supplied is according to Joule's law I square R t we can consider. So, it is a 10,000 ohm square multiplied by current so sorry resistance 0 0.001 into time 0.25. So, you are getting this one is around 2500 joules. So, heat supplied how much heat supplied by you using this particular power or current we can say 2500 joules. So, heat required to melt also I have to calculate in terms of joules, but he has given heat required to melt so many joules per mm cube he has given uh, that is why this heat required to melt I am going to multiply with what volume of the nugget volume of the nugget he has given the problem itself. So, heat required to melt will be equal to heat required to melt per unit volume multiplied by volume of the nugget. This is joules per mm cube this is so many volume we can say mm cube. So, we can cancel this one you are getting so directly so many joules now so many joules. So, what you are getting friends here this you are getting so 840 yeah, 840 joules you are getting this one please check it here right 840 joules. Then we need to find out melting efficiency it is equal to heat required to melt by heat supplied we have to consider heat required to melt by heat supplied. So, heat required to melt is 840 joules heat supplied is 2500. So, you are getting how much this efficiency efficiency is how much upon simplification it is 33.3 multiplied by 100 also you can make it here 33.6 percent we can say 33.6 percent yes given percentage is asking now up to second decimal you can see 33.6 percent you can say 
right? 840, heat required to melt by heat supply multiply 100 will give so, so much of melting efficiency or thermal efficiency both will be same, it is 33.6 percent, it is 33.6 percentage we can consider.